Hello, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and I am going to show you how to paint this lighthouse beach. This is an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I already have my masking tape set up for the horizon line. So the masking tape is about five inches from the bottom of the canvas. On my palette, I have the two colors, light blue permanent and titanium white. I'm also gonna use a three quarter inch flat wash brush. First thing we're gonna do is dip the brush in the water and tap it on the side so most of the water drips out and load it in the light blue permanent. Because there's still water on my brush, I'm dragging it into the paint to make sure that the water is not concentrated in the paint, but um, generally mixed to create sort of a thinner um, layer of paint so that the flow of the paint can um, go pretty um, kind of thinner when we start out. So I'm gonna start out at the top of the canvas with this light blue permanent and um, paint left and right strokes using the full width of the brush. So we're gonna go um, about a third of the way down before we add titanium white in there. But ultimately we're creating sort of a, an ombre effect of this blue. It's going to fade into a lighter blue and it's gonna eventually turn to a very, very light, almost white color on the bottom. So um, keep doing that. And as you see, I went about a third of the way down and now I'm gonna load my brush in the titanium white without rinsing it off. Load it in that white, kind of drag it out on your palette so that white kind of already mixes with that blue. And um, notice uh, when I started, I um, painted the white, but I'm blending it up so that white will blend up into that blue. So we already have our blue that is transitioning to a very light blue. So um, left and right strokes kind of paint up and then start working your way down. And it's okay if you have some streaks in the sky that look lighter, um, that's okay. We can just pretend they're clouds or something, but keep working your way down and we wanna go all the way to the bottom. So we're gonna keep adding white to our brush. And I know this video is going a tad bit fast right now, so press pause so that you can um, catch up. Um, so keep adding that white. It's gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter until on the very bottom, it's almost um, so light blue that it almost looks like it's white. And you can see that some of that blue that's still on my brush, it's still coming out through that white. And it doesn't have to be a perfect blend. Um, Keep adding that white until you get to the tape line. Uh, it is okay if you paint slightly over the tape line, that is what it's there for. And keep adding your color. See, you have like a little streak of the light blue that shows up in there and that is perfectly fine. So um, mixing your colors on the canvas, you can um, paint back up. You can add more light blue permanent if you need to at the top until your entire sky is filled with this very light, um, pretty sky color. Okay. Next, we're going to do the water. And the three colors I used for the water are phthalo green, uh, bright aqua green, and uh, titanium white. So at this point, we are gonna need to remove the tape line. And so gently pull that off, and you should have a nice crisp horizon line after you pull the tape off. Um, I mentioned in my blog post about the phthalo green. If you don't have phthalo green, mix phthalo blue with bright aqua green or use any kind of dark turquoise that you have available with you. I always advocate that you can use whatever paints you have on hand and um, you can always message, message me directly if you need help with converting colors. Okay. Over here on the left side of the canvas, I am measuring about 
one and a half inches down from the horizon line. I'm gonna draw a horizontal line and this line is gonna kinda of dip down over here and it's going to go about three inches down from the horizon line. Okay, so you're gonna connect those um, two points that we made and it's going to be the sand line, okay? So everything above that line is gonna be the water and everything below that is gonna be the sand. So you have about three and a half inches from the bottom over on the left and two inches from the bottom over on the right. And it doesn't have to be exact. In fact, you don't even have to measure it. You can just draw that line and it'll be fine. We have, it's just a line that divides the sand and the water. Okay, we're gonna paint the water next and we're gonna make sure our brush has all of that light blue sky color off of it. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off and pat it dry. And we're gonna start with that darker turquoise color and that's gonna be the color that's way off um, right below the horizon line. Um, I didn't mask my sky if you want to. You can, but I'm just gonna be really careful to make sure that that line stays nice and crisp. So we really only need a little bit of this thalo turquoise. Start right there under the horizon line and add your um, turquoise. And I'm using that brush, the tip of it, so I get that thin line. I just wanna be really careful to make sure that horizon line doesn't turn into a mountain or anything like that. And so I'm just gently applying that thalo turquoise. And then um, I'm gonna kinda go down probably about a quarter inch, two and a half an inch down the water. And our water is going to um, get lighter as we work our way down. So we're going to eventually add in some of those other, that other aqua color that's lighter, okay? So I went down um, and I just add another lay layer in here of that Thalo Turquoise. Um, this is a Hobby Lobby brand of Thalo Turquoise. Uh, Liquitex doesn't even make that color. I think they make a turquoise color now that's pretty close to it. So as you can see, I added the um, bright aqua green. This is the Liquitex bright aqua green. And I'm going to have it blend with the thalo turquoise. So that bright aqua green is blending with the thalo. So it's getting lighter as we work our way down. So I'm mixing the colors on the canvas. So I'm not gonna go all the way down with this bright aqua green. I'm gonna leave a gap at the bottom where the sand line is. There's a bigger gap over on the right and a smaller gap over on the left. Um, you may need to freshen your titanium white if it's been sitting there for a while, um, but load your brush in the titanium white and gently add that on the bottom of our ocean. So the color is light on the bottom and it um, gently fades up into the bright aqua green and turquoise. So very, very gently, white can take over very fast. So add just a tiny bit on your tip and brush it in and um, blend it up into your blues very lightly. Um, now the ocean is kind of far away from our point of view, so we're not gonna get very detailed in these waves, but I will go back with a palette knife and do um, some different white lines to indicate some uh, water, uh, light reflecting in the water and perhaps some waves. So if you need to, like what I am doing, I just add a bit of um, thalo turquoise in there just to uh, kind of add it way in the back and blend it but it should be a pretty smooth blend of the dark turquoise to the light turquoise to the very light turquoise with the white okay and it's okay if you painted over your sand line a little bit the next color I need to load on my palette is un bleached titanium. This is a sand color 
and I'm going to use some burnt umber. So if you have a different kind of tan looking color um, or brown, you can do that as well. Um, you could skip the brown if you don't want to do the blending thing with the brown. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. So this is the three quarter flat brush. Obviously all that blue is mic um, wiped off of it rinsed off and dried um, add the unbleached titanium to your brush and paint um, that area underneath the water so uh, we really want to define that sand line at this point because we have the water um, further in the background and we have our sand here so when you work your way a little bit down add just a tiny bit of that brown to your brush so that our sand is lighter at the top and it's going to blend to that darker color on the bottom so uh, I reloaded with some more of the unbleached titanium because I really don't want this to get too dark I want it to still be that pretty sand color but just a little bit darker on the bottom so that brown kind of blends on the bottom I'm gonna go in there and really define that shape of the sand line you don't want any uh, white spots showing through at this point between the water and the sand Okay, so here is that palette knife that I mentioned earlier. Um, I guess this is a number one palette knife. You can do it with a different one if you don't have the number one. Um, or if you don't have any palette knife, you can kind of do the same technique with a really tiny round brush. Okay, so um, with the palette knife, I'm going to load the side of it with this white and so that paint is right there on the side of the blade okay and then I'm going to use it to create these horizontal marks in the water okay so I'm going to hold my palette knife sort of horizontally and I'm going to make these uh, marks um, the thing that I find interesting about using a palette knife is you really got to let go of all control if you really like the brush and you really like the control of the brush the palette knife is not really the same um, it's creating sort of these abstract marks and we can't really control what happens with this we're just we just got to kind of let it do its thing now so I'm loading it I'm making these horizontal marks and um, they're very effective for creating these water uh, light lines in the water but we can't really control what is happening at this point um, i want to purposefully make these lines sort of thicker and more dense towards the bottom just to kind of indicate that there's some ocean waves crashing against the shore down here but way off in the distance these lines are kind of further apart and um, not as long um, they're kind of more spotted way off in the distance okay um, and then like I said towards the bottom they're more dense and longer so you want to just keep doing this until you're content with the amount of white lines that you want in your water I'm gonna go silent here for just a few seconds while I finish this step We are done with the palette knife for this painting and make sure you wipe all that paint off and set it to the side. Um, next I'm going to show you how I did my clouds with a cotton ball. So this is just a normal a piece of cotton um, that you would find in your medicine cabinet. So you want to dip it in just titanium white, so just a little bit. And we only want a, a little bit of paint on that. So I'm actually going to kind of 
remove some of the paint by dabbing it on my um, piece of canvas that I wiped my brushes off of. Um, so you can wipe it off with a paper towel. And we're gonna start um, by just kind of dabbing the clouds. Um, I'm working at the from the top of the cloud downward. So this is the top of this first cloud. And um, you can kind of experiment with this. I found it more effective to move your hand in sort of a, a circular motion rather than um, dabbing it like you're sponge painting. This is more I'm moving the paint around by pushing down and sort of moving my hand in sort of a circular motion. And as I'm doing that, I'm forming the shape of the cloud. And these clouds are very light in this painting. Um, I was thinking they're more like um, when the, if you've ever been to the beach and it's foggy in that moment when the it starts to clear up and you can see the remnants of the fog kind of floating away in the sky. So um, they're very light clouds. They're not going to be very bright. That the white on our um, cotton cotton's allowing that white to be very soft and subtle and translucent we can still see a lot of that sky through the cloud so um, here is my first cloud I formed the shape and ideally I want my white to be brighter at the top the edges of the cloud but then as I work my way down to the bottom and middle area there's not a lot of paint right there it kind of fades away okay so um, when you go to reload, you may find that your cotton is starting to get kind of stringy and sticky. You may want to move to a different area of your cotton or go to a new cotton ball. Um, again, make sure you're only adding a little bit of paint to the cotton, wiping it off. And I'm doing some more clouds over here that are sort of right there above the horizon line. Um, this area of the sky is already very light because when we painted the sky, we added a lot of white in this area. So um, these clouds are going to be very, very subtle in this area. You can only see just a faint indication that there's clouds over here. And so I'm just going to do kind of the same thing. I'm going to start my way at the top of the cloud, kind of making it brighter at the top, kind of letting it fade away towards the bottom. Um, um, if you like the sponge painting, if you like dabbing it, if that works for you, uh, I found a, kind of a mixture of both, kind of twisting it, um, moving your hand in a sort of circular motion to make the shape of the cloud. Um, and so I'm just going to continue to do that over here on the left. I found the clouds easier to do towards the bottom because we already have a nice, um, very white base for it. So we really don't have to work too hard at the bottom to make it look like clouds because it's already faded away. If you wanted uh, some of these clouds to be brighter, you would just go in and add a second layer of white so to some of the other, some of the edges of the clouds, so that the edges would stand out a little bit more. So I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep. Um, I did a lot more clouds on the bottom, and just uh, ended up doing another one in the upper left area of the painting. So like I said, if you need to switch cotton, you can see how it gets kind of stringy. You kind of have to kind of find a new area of the cotton and make sure that your strings of the cotton aren't sticking out everywhere because that's not going to help. Um, but I did another cloud over here in the upper left and uh, it ended up getting covered by the lighthouse later on in the painting. But well, that's okay. I wasn't really happy with the way this cloud looked. But um, keep that in mind also that um, the lighthouse does take up a good portion of the left side of our sky in this painting. So um, you don't really have to go too much into details with the clouds on the left. Okay, but it's kind of fun to do this. Um, super relaxing and different if you've never painted clouds with cotton. It's a, a very new, um, I found it effective and if you don't like the way the cotton is, you could always do this with a brush as well. 
So I'm going to go silent here and um, finish the clouds. Actually, I'm going to mention one thing um, right here. It's like I'm doing a second layer of cloud by adding more white. It kind of makes um, some of these clouds over the bottom stand out a little bit more. Just by adding that second layer of white, it makes it just a little bit brighter so that it stands out a little bit more. Okay, I am done with my clouds and um, I have my painting and for the most part it is dry. Um, you cannot trace the traceable until it's dried. So my video edited cut off the part of me waiting 30 minutes for it to dry, um, but now it's dry. And so I'm going to transfer the lighthouse to the canvas. So this is um, the lighthouse that I drew. Um, and I uploaded this traceable for you so that you can print it out on two sheets of paper and tape them together. And the lighthouse is over on the left part of the canvas with a sheet of graphite paper below it. Um, the, the spacing of the base of the lighthouse to the, the right edge of the canvas, I believe is one or two inches. The blog post tells you exactly how many inches it is, but it's not all the way to the left. Um, but, and the edge of the paper is not all the way to the left of the, the, um, edge either. Just so pay attention to that measurement so that your lighthouse is, um, kind of in a good spacing, but. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly, you, if you want to put it right in the center, you can do that if that's what you want. Um, but it's pretty far to the left, if that makes sense. So um, tracing everything so that the drawing transfers to the canvas. And um, the more firm that you press with your pencil, the more dark it will be on the transfer. I always transfer mine with the canvas flat on the table. Um, I don't find it easy to do the transfer when it's uh, on, the on the easel. So doing it flat on the surface is very helpful. Okay, and it's not showing up on the camera, but I can see it for sure. And just so that you can see it, you are good to go. You'll be able to paint. If it's too light, you may have to go back and press a little bit darker so it's nice and dark and you can see it better. Okay, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the masking tape to mask off the far left and right edges of the lighthouse. Okay, so Here's the far right edge of the lighthouse. And this is going to help tremendously um, with painting our lighthouse because it has stripes, but also um, helps you stay inside the lines so that your, your lighthouse is going to be a nice and crisp line and nice and even. And you don't have to worry about painting outside the lines and having to go back and fix your sky or water because you um, messed up. So this is really helpful. And um, I'm just masking off the far left and right edges. I'm not doing any masking on the top area of the lighthouse. Okay. 
So make sure that is nice and on there. And go ahead and load your palette with um, titanium white and we'll be using Mars Black. So I'm gonna paint the stripes of this lighthouse first. Use your three quarter inch flash flat brush. Start with the white. And I started from the bottom of the lighthouse and worked my way up. So every other space is going to be white. And the direction of my strokes are going kind of in a curved diagonal direction. And you'll notice right away how opaque your white is. If you are seeing your ocean um, through the white, you may have to wait for that to dry and add a second layer. layer. Um, the sky shouldn't be too much of an issue because the sky is already a very light color, but since the ocean is dark, you may have to add a second layer in there so it's not a see-through lighthouse. And so go ahead and do each of your white areas. Um, you can switch to a smaller brush if you need to, especially for the stripes that kind of get up high in the lighthouse and their smaller area. So switch to a, a round brush or any smaller brush that you feel comfortable using. You can do that for the smaller areas. In fact, I believe I used the round brush for all of the black stripes just to have um, more control and precision in there. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm adding a second coat on there just to make sure it's nice and opaque and not see-through. Sometimes um, you'll notice that it's see-through after the paint has dried and then you'll have to do that coat again. Okay, so next I'm going to load my palette with the Mars Black and I'm gonna do the same thing but fill in the black areas of the stripes. And you can see why that um, the masking tape is so beneficial for this step because we don't have to worry about um, getting in. So, um, we can paint over the tape and it's it will be fine um, if you paint over the tape. So I'm gonna use the round brush for all the black areas because this black uh, tends to go crazy sometimes and it's easy to kind of mess up when you have the darkest color that you're working with. So you wanna just make sure that you stay um, in between the areas that you're supposed to be painting. And like I said, it's okay if you paint over the tape. And I'm gonna be twisting this canvas to different angles so that I could get that in um, inside the lines. So um, the direction again is kind of curved and going diagonally. This black is naturally very opaque, so I don't have to worry about going back with a second coat. Okay, I'm going to start doing some of the details on the top of the lighthouse and I'm just going to gently pull this tape down so that I can get in there because it's covering some of the, the upward part of the tower. And so we have this sort of dome um, shape here at the top and I'm going to just paint that in solid with the black and I'm still using that number four round brush. Um, like I said, if you need to switch to a different kind of brush that feels more comfortable for you with these smaller areas, feel free to do that. Okay. 
and I'm just filling those in solid. Uh, that's what came of the drawing. And so what am I doing here? I, um, I'm i going to dip my finger in the titanium white and I'm just going to press my finger to kind of form that light that's on the inside of that tower and it formed a circle. Um, I suppose you can do that with a brush but I kind of like the effect that it makes when you do it with your finger. And then with the brush I'm going to paint that top sort of circular shape that's right there at the top. And then we have the rest of the cage that's sort of surrounding that light to paint. Um, because these lines need to be kind of um, precise because we're painting small lines, I dab just a tiny bit of water on my brush and I'm sort of twisting it to make sure that my bristles are all gathered together to a nice point. And that paint is right there at the tip so that I can be prepared to paint these um, very detailed lines. Um, this can also be done with a black Sharpie for better control or a black paint pen. And so I did that uh, uh, trapezoid shape and then I'm just going to paint the rest of the cage that's surrounded by that light. And I'm going to make just this top line a tiny bit thicker. Okay, and we are done with the majority of this lighthouse. Um, I'm going to show you something that's optional. It's very subtle in this painting, so it doesn't make too much of a difference, but it creates a nice effect. So I have my three-quarter dry brush, and I'm going to do a um, three-quarter wash brush, and I'm going to do a dry brush technique. So load it in the white pat it dry so that you only have a little bit of paint on your brush and sort of drag it in the area on the left and it's it wasn't effective right here because my black wasn't dry all the way so I kind of ended up messing that up a little bit you can see me struggling there for a little bit so I highly recommend that you wait for it to dry first then do the dry brush um, over on the left so it's kind of a highlight you wouldn't see the highlight on the white parts but on the black parts it creates a really pretty sort of highlight and um, like I said it does a better effect when your black is dry so that's kind of an optional thing you can do but the magic happens when you pull that tape off it looks nice and pretty and um, nice and crisp and you're just thankful that we have masking tape to use for our paintings Okay, so here is what we're going to do next. Here is where my lighting got kind of funny with this painting. So I do apologize that my lighting kind of diminished here, um, but it is what it is. Uh, but what I'm doing with this white is I'm adding just a little bit of highlight over here at the top part of the, of the tower, just on the left part of some of these stripes and at the top part of the cage and on the top part of those sort of dome shapes. Just a little bit of white in there and I'm just going back and kind of defining that black part there a little bit. Just to, uh, that white gives it just a little bit of interest there. And then um, our windows. So if you are not feeling very brave with these windows, um, go in with a pencil and draw them in first and then paint them in. I decided to just paint them in uh, but they're just a rectangle shape and they get slightly smaller as they go up the tower okay and I'm just using my four round brush and the color black to paint these windows in so there's three windows here I suppose you can get masking tape and sort of mask it off to make a vertical sort of space and then paint them in, but um, I decided to just wing it at this point. Okay, so we have our windows. And then what happened with this recording is it got cut off and some of the birds that I created were not recorded so another 
major apology on my part, but here are my seagulls. And I'm gonna paint more seagulls to show you how I did these seagulls. But I basically only used black and white. So Mars black, titanium white, uh, mixing different shades of gray on your palette. So grabbing white, grabbing black, blending to them together to create a gray. And this is, I believe the four round brush. Um, if it's too thick of a brush for you, use a smaller brush than the four round. Actually, I think this is a zero brush. I don't remember, but um, just um, you can do two different kinds. If you want the seagull to be more defined because it's closer, if you want to see part of its body and tail, um, you can do that. So I did the wings. Okay, and then you can do, so there's the wings, and then paint like his tail, and then some of his body and head would show, because this seagull is closer. And we want some color variation in there, so instead of using just that same gray, we can um, reload our brush in um, some white, and take that white and just add a bit of white in some areas. Okay, um, on the blog post, I provide a reference photo that you can use to um, paint your seagulls. And that's the reference photo that I am looking at while I'm doing these birds. It's very helpful to really observe um, how when there's a picture of a flock of seagulls in the sky, there are different shades of gray because they're in different um, distances away. Some are closer, we can see more details, but some are further away and we would just see that typical bird line that we draw in the sky. Um, and then some of the tips of the wings of these seagulls have black on the tips. So I'm going back over some of these birds and adding just a little black dot on the tip of the wings. And then, um, you can paint as many birds as you want. Um, I'm going to add a few more to this painting. So some of these are so small, they're so way in the distance. So we would just do a little tiny um, bird line way in the distance. Okay. I am done with the birds and next I'm going to move on to the beach grass. So on the very bottom of the painting, way in the foreground, we have all this beach grass and I'm going to use a mixture of different colors. Uh, I have deep green permanent, burnt umber. I'm also going to use a little black and a little white into this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very dark green color. That's going to be the base of our beach grass. So um, I'm actually going to mix with my palette knife since I have it over here available. I'm going to grab about equal amounts of the green and the brown and just a little bit of black. And again, another apology about my lighting here. It's not the greatest lighting, um, but this is a, a very dark uh, green color that I'm mixing on my palette. It's the deep green, brown, and a little bit of black. Then I'm going to grab my fan brush and I'm going to paint the base of this grass. So starting at the bottom of the canvas, I'm just going to drag this dark color that I made and I'm going to just create the base of my grass here. Do a variety of using the fan brush vertically that creates a different kind of stroke. And when you use the fan brush horizontally, it creates sort of the wider base, but we're not really doing details of the grass. We're just creating this dark um, baseline for it. And I'm just gently brushing my fan brush. I'm going to do this all the way across the canvas on the bottom. And it is going to overlap that lighthouse because this beach grass is in front of the lighthouse. Okay, so I'm just brushing it. You can see the effect that the fan brush creates. It's kind of a sort of a wispy, sort of translucent um, grass. I'm doing a second layer here. Just paint from the bottom and stroke upwards. Okay, um, that's it 
For the fan brush, I'm going to switch back to my round brush here so that uh, I can get it, use it to create some more detailed um, grass. So I'm going to make a lighter color of this green by adding um, some white into that deep green permanent and also some of that darker green that I made adding that into that. So essentially adding white to that dark, first dark green that we made. Um, let me say something about these colors. So um, we have the, the deep green on our palette, we have the white, we have the black, we have the brown. It doesn't really matter the exact proportions you're using to mix the colors. In fact, you're going to see me do this when I paint these longer strands of grass that I'm reloading in different amounts of the green and the white and the brown to create that color variation in the grass. So with that round brush, I'm just stroking up to create a cluster of these um, of the beach grass and so I'm just going to um, at the bottom of my canvas paint several clusters of these longer strands of the grass so starting from the bottom of the canvas and stroking upwards loading your palette your brush in different amounts of white and green and brown um, and it doesn't matter that it's different every time you load it that creates that color variation in the grass okay so just keep adding different strokes of different heights of the grass they're kind of going at different angles on the right side they're kind of uh, there's a few strands of grass that are overlapping the water they're so tall that they um, go above the water um, level, eye area level that we see where the water is. And over here on the left, um, some longer strands of grass and um, your grass lines do also overlap the lighthouse. And you may find it tricky because the lighthouse is so dark, so you may have to add a little bit more white to your green just to make them a lighter strand so they stand out gonna move my painting at a different angle so you can kind of see the different colors in there. I know my lighting is not um, helping that much here with showing the different um, shades of green and brown and white in there. But you basically just want to keep doing that until you are satisfied with the amount of beach grass that you have at the bottom of your painting. So some of my grass blades have that little cattail thing going at the tip of there. So to do that, you can use your unbleached titanium or you can just mix brown and white together to create that light color. So I'm gonna do that to the tips of some of my grass blades. And I'm not trying to be realistic or anything right here, just sort of abstract. And that is, this is the last step that I'm showing you with this painting. So I'm going to zoom out here to show you the whole painting, the final result. But that is it. This is the conclusion of the Lighthouse Beach painting tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed painting with me. Thanks for watching.